was asked to make a video to basically unveil some of the most hard to see violations on a credit report. And in order to do that, I'll be basically screen sharing my phone here, uh, my computer, um, over some credit reports from clients. And I'm gonna show you some violations that you probably haven't seen and some of the things that most most credit repair experts, if not all, don't even see. So uh, go ahead and watch this video if you really want to see some of the stuff that um, most other companies aren't doing. This is the video you want to watch. So I'm going to dive in and show you specifically what I look out for. And keep in mind, the files that I'm going to show you are really complex. They're very difficult, meaning these other people have hired many other people and even some credi very credible companies and they still have had no luck. Um, we're having luck on those files. So this is the first report I'm going to show you when they first sent in the report and then we're going to show you the before and afters. But more importantly, this is not a before and after video. This is basically showing you the violations that I found and the things that led to a deletion. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, and then of course, while I do it, I'm going to enjoy this amazing beverage right here, hibiscus and yogurt. So, let's have a, let's have a drink. We're doing it, we're going in. Let's open up this note. Okay, so, yeah, there's obnoxious music in the background and planes. <clears throat> I'm in an airport right now, traveling, so. Before we even look at a credit report, um, I, there needs to be <clears throat> an understanding of how to repair credit. So, of course you want to find violations, violations, and excuse my handwriting, believe it or not, <clears throat> there's a statistic in a study of the most highly intelligent people, they all have terrible handwriting. Excuse me. So that's my, I guess it's a compliment if you have terrible handwriting. Nonetheless, we're using tablets and devices and we're not really writing as much. I'm using my, my phone here, my Samsung 22 Ultra, and I love it. So convenient. I can sit here and make a video for you and do a nice presentation. Okay, with my stylus. All right, so violations that you need to look for well, you're going to have to understand these five rules, five laws. These five laws are basically going to basically make your dispute bulletproof. Number one is FCRA. FCRA, we know that, Fair Credit Reporting Act. Number two is FDCPA, Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. Number three is Fair Credit <clears throat> the Fact Act, Fair and Accurate Transaction Act, and then number four is Fair Credit Billing Act, and five is Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Actually, another one. There's, these are the basic ones, okay? So, um, when I look at a credit report, I'm looking for all of these violations right here, right? I'm looking for all of these violations. Whoa, what the heck? Interesting. Yeah, I'm not really used to this. Okay, so let's go in and um, <coughs> look at the credit report itself. So we're going to go check out this one. And I marked out the name. I marked out all the personal information here because, uh, not all of it, just the ones that, you know, make it seem, uh, you know, we want to keep the, the customer's information marked out as much as possible, but still not completely doing it. But if I were to show you this, you would not be able to know who this person is because I have marked out enough information. So, um, but as you can see here, this, this is his name, his address, his, you know, employer, businesses, whatever. As we scroll down, we're gonna have, you know, all the accounts and stuff like that. 
So one particular count, um, when you're finding violations, of course, yes, it does help to find inconsistencies um, in the personal information section. I mean, that's pretty easy. You can make this complex as you want it. As you notice, name, the names will be different. You can just look at the red. This red is more than that red, and that red is smaller. So definitely there will be inconsistencies there, right? Also with the address, also with employers, stuff like that. So it's your job to find that. But let's scroll down and look at one that is really, really crazy. Um, where is it? Okay. I believe it was Capital One, or it was Devora. Okay, maybe it's Capital One. Okay, so automatically, um, you could see that the highest balance right here is definitely, you know, it's not, this is different than that, that is different than this. These are all different right here, okay? They're all different. You can see that that's zero, that's 4,473, and that's 4,600. So you could have a case just on this, okay? You could use um, Fair Credit Billing Act, Okay, you could use Fair Credit Reporting Act. You can use um, Equal Credit Opportunity Act in this one, and you could use the FACT Act in this one. So you already automatically have three laws for this one right here, three sep three cases. And the beauty of ACAT is that this whole account right here, it could find tons of cases. You want to add these cases up. Right, so that's already three cases. This is another case right here. This date last verified, and these dates are not there. How could you not have a date of when it was verified? So how, how could we honestly find when it was verified? Because that's important. Because when you could find when it was actually verified, or when it was verified throughout the time, you could have a case right there. So that would be two cases. Okay, that's and this stuff I'm being very basic with you guys. Um, you could take this video and you could learn a lot, but it's still not it's not going to be sufficient enough for you to do what we do here. Um, otherwise, I would be stupid for showing you this because I don't think it's in the interest of my business to share this type of video. If you're trying to copy off me, that would suck. The purpose of this video is just to show you that. We're doing something completely different. You guys would know if you hired a company, they would not have told you this. So the information in this video, we're telling you different stuff. But even if we tell you different stuff, you wouldn't know how to do it and they wouldn't really know how to do it because if they did know how to do it, they would have already done it. And the fact that they didn't do it means that we're doing something different, which basically logically means that we will repair your credit. And believe it or not, yeah, this stuff gets more technical because you can know these three cases, but then you're going to have to apply those three cases and dispute on those cases and then also the frequency of the disputes and how to respond to the rebuttals. So as you can see, this task gets very tedious and it gets very prolonged in the sense that you're up against a system that's better than you. That's why we designed a proprietary system called ACAT. It will basically... What I'm doing here, it does it in like seconds. All the violations that we're going to find here in this video, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but pretty much ACAT will do that in, in, in less than a minute for the whole report. And not just one report. Remember, we look at your archive reports because at any given point, if we can prove to the credit report, remember this is FCRA, FCRA, that your credit report or a report was reported differently, it had adverse action on you and it affected your credit report in a negative way, you can get remedy for that situation. That situation can be rectified. You can even get compensation if you go the legal route, but that's a goose chase that 
Well, it's not always a goose chase. There's a recent lawsuit that, you know, CF CFPB is going after the bureaus and stuff like that. There's always lawsuits that, class action lawsuits that people are winning. But, it, it, you know, it just, it just takes some time. I don't suppose you guys want to join any of those class action lawsuits. Um, you guys just want to fix your credit quick. And you want to know, like, can it be done? Yeah, it can be done. I know how to do it. So, that's one case. Now, let's look at... Uh, let me see if I can erase. Like I said, guys, I'm not really... I'm not really good with... Uh, this stuff here. Okay. So continue and sign... Okay, whatever. These dates are different. This is the second, as you can see. Oh my god, I have to erase somehow. Oh, I know what to do. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Will this do it? Sorry, guys. Like, yeah. Um, I don't think there's an option for me to erase. Okay, it, we'll move on. Either way. The date of last activity is different. This is different than that. That's different than that. That's different than that. That's another case. Date reported. This is the 15th. That's the 13th. This is the 15th of November. That's the 13th of December. And this is the 1st of December. So these are all different right here. Date opened. Uh, January, February, March, April. May 29th, 2015. May 1st, 2015. May 1st. So th this is already different than that. This is already different than that. Close date was here, January 2021, and it's not here, okay? Uh, then it says the account was not disputed, okay? The account was not disputed, but there has been further evidence that it was because as you can see it says account dispute status is not disputed however look at this now pay close attention to this how in the hell can the account status say account not disputed but then it says account was in dispute now resolved so that basically says it was disputed and this is not so you can clearly see this is bullshit this is not, this is not um, congruent with this. The payment status, it says it's a collection or charge off. Well, I made another video about this, which I'll leave in the link description below, is that if the account is indeed a charge off, it cannot be a collection because a charge off is legally uncollectible debt under a IRS tax code of uh, permissible business expenses that lenders um, can basically use to their advantage because they always do. And so if it's if they've received a tax benefit from that, they're not liable. Basically, a tax benefit means they're not liable, which means you will be liable. But since when did you get a t IRS tax form from debt? from a credit card like Capital One? Probably not. Leave a, script, leave a comment in the below if you have. Um, but like I said, it's, a, it's legally uncollectible debt, but it's marked as a collection. Now, this is a hack. This is a hack that the um, creditors do. Remember, this whole account right here is being reported through a system called eOscar. eOscar, okay? That's what all data furnishers use to report shit. Uh, stuff on your credit report um, and jewelry stores auto company auto dealers and you know finance companies they all use eOscar what they do is they've learned how to manipulate eOscar so they can hit you with a double whammy okay all of these stuff that they're putting in they put it in a fashion and experience tells me this and experience gives them the know how to do this they would deliberately manipulate how they enter this information because they know it affects FICO. They know that if they misuse these dates and misuse these 
um, balances and the dispute status, they, you know, they know the score will go down. And when the score goes down, guess what? Competitors won't send you offer. C Capital One wants to keep you. They don't want you to go to Amex, which is, you know, further down here. Now, this is another very important thing. We look at, we look at the close date. It was January 2021. Now look at here. Okay. Why does it say... March 2021, right? Why does it say February? This says March, that says February. You see these two? And then this one says January. One says January, and this says March and Feb. So that's another case right there. All right. Credit limit. This is not consistent with those two. This date is not consistent with those two. The term length. Well, there's no term. It's not an installment loan. It's a credit. It's a revolving account. So these. That's just basically that. So you. You know, other companies. Even if you were to know all of this, let's say you knew all of this already. You found all the violations that I found, because other companies are not, because you would know. You would, uh, every time you hire a credit repair company, you should, you have the right to have a copy of the dispute, and you should be in the know-how, because even if they don't give you a copy of the dispute, you're going to get a copy of the dispute results within the mail, because that's gonna match up with your personal information section. And so if you're smart, you can reverse engineer it, not even reverse engineer it, you can just clearly see that XYZ account was disputed, and then the result was this. And then you can pull another credit report and you will find the creditor remarks and other updated information within the credit investigation results. And you compare that with your fresh pull of the report and then you'll be able to see some real inconsistencies right there. So that's basically what's going on here. Um, and we're not finished with this because let's say you knew how to do all of this. You, you found all the violations that I'm willing to bet that the other company couldn't find violations like this. These aren't even all the violations. This is just enough for the time I have. But let's just say you found all these violations just like I did here. Well, that wouldn't help you if you didn't know how to properly strategically send those off in the right format in to the right department and in the right frequency. Remember, your frequency of dispute is so important because, you know, there's a there was a lawsuit. You can look at my um, my last video. There was a lawsuit right here, and you can clearly see these bureaus are being negligent. So if you watch this video right here, the Experian class action lawsuit, okay. Um, you would know creditors are being negligent. Okay, boom. There's a 200 and 200, $22.5 million class action lawsuit, which is peanuts, because these are billion dollar companies. Um, you would know that they're being negligent. Okay. So, and I quote the article here, Yeah, so you have to understand the frequency, otherwise you're gonna get jammed up like all these people, okay? All right, so moving on. Uh, this is, I could dispute this too, but I don't really wanna focus on this because as you can see right here, um, there's comments of the chapter 13 and you don't want those comments to be there. You don't want comments to be there, okay? Here's another whammy where it's a closed account and it was, you know, paid. Put OK here. Is this a collection? Probably, because it says it's derogatory. 
but they manipulate it. They're they're making they're confusing you, confusing you. They're confusing the system because that's American Express's way of keeping it, making it stick, making it stick. Because if this is disputed, 100% how it should be, it'll be harder to get off, right? And so they're going to, um, I mean, e easier, I guess. Well, it could be hard and easy, but my point is, they make it difficult for you to get this off by changing things and it will confuse you and it will take your, your time because the system doesn't really know what's going on and you'll be discouraged. But it, we need to know what this is. Um, I mean, is it a collection? Is it a charge off? Based upon this, it says, okay, okay. That means there's on time payments. So one, just by, if we were to look at this account, just by looking at this section here, we would think it's a revolving account that's been, <clears throat> that's, that's open or paid. But maybe it's not because you see chapter 13. If it was paid, fine, why is it having all this? So we could fix that too as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got bronchitis, guys. Um, what else we got here? Let's move on. Um, oh, easy pay. Oh, yeah, this is a crazy one. Let's talk about this. So if we were to look here, guys, what do you guys see? Show me what you guys see. For one, there is an entity... This is not a this is not a legal entity because if you look here well maybe not on this credit report but it should have the creditor's address here somewhere down here their address and with their address they need their entity name and this is not a LLC, it's not a, you know, so this is ambiguous. This is like not accurate. Then if you look at the account, there's no, there's no account information here. So they're not reporting to Experian, obviously. But highest balance is zero here and then 1100 here. Okay, that's two cases. March 1st and then October 31st, right here, okay? It's another case. January 30th, and then nothing here and nothing here. January 30th, and nothing here. And then January 1st, right here. January, uh, December 23rd, and then nothing here. And then, so, that's one, that's two case. no, that's two, that's two, that's three cases. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cases that we could, nine complaints. We can actually take nine complaints and we can times it by three because within those nine complaints there are subsections to the complaints that are based upon the um, highest probable way that the the most likely way that the bureau will respond and so we would counteract those disputes ahead of time and that's why i told you guys before frequency 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 of disputes is important and that's what acat does that's why we have a, a a higher advantage than everyone else because we're not waiting we can predict we're kind of like god we can like we like know the future anyway 1425 zero here 1495 that seems to be okay but this is missing here these dates here no dates there so that's two cases that's one case this is uh oh well it's not reporting to experience never mind i'm stupid okay so um, eh, so this is a charge off collection. Remember, remember that story. It cannot be a charge off and a collection at the same time. Um, dis dispute status account not disputed. But then again, here it says account information disputed. So that's BS, right? That's total BS. That, that's a lie right there. So that right there should be a significant, significant enough to knock this out. 
Um, what else we got? These dates are different. Why are these dates different? Why? The term length, 12 months, and then nothing here? Why? Can't do that. Payment frequency? It's not detailed. It's not detailed. Credit limit. Uh, well, if how could you have a high balance? How can you have a balance being reported, but you don't know the credit limit? So we don't even know if this account is legit or not, okay? And then, if you look at the close date, it was October 31st. But then you go here, according to the legend, it says August 2022. So this is, this is BS. BS. Boom. Okay, so that's it for this. Uh, oh, the bankruptcy. Dude. Bankruptcy, we can, yeah, this is, we don't know what that is. Um, this would be a court. What court? You know, it doesn't tell you the court here. But why not here? There's ton, There's millions of U.S. bankruptcy. There's thousands of U.S. bankruptcy court. Which one? Even this one. U.S. bankruptcy court, California, San Jose. Okay. Where's the liability? What's the exempt amount? Doesn't have that. Asset amount doesn't have that. Doesn't have that. This is all like unverified bullshit. Um, reference number. Well, how do they get that reference number when the court? does not disclose a third party. So you'd have to prove, well, I'm not gonna tell you how to remove it, but anyway, you could just see here, uh, it says federal court, but then it says California state court, you know, so w which one is it? The reference number is different. The dates are different from this date to that date to that date. They're all different dates. So you have about six different cases there. Okay. You can see the addresses here. The court, you can probably find it. Okay, so that's that for that. Now let's go to this one. I think Capital One Auto Finance. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay, so um, oh. my mistake. This is a good one too. This is a good file. To work on so capital one on finance it was open on april 7 2022 closed no info okay but this is probably not the there should be another one yeah, I'm going to go to a different one. I don't like that one. I will go to... Let me try... Oh, okay. This is a good one. I think... Is it? No. This music is really annoying, by the way. There was one account on here that was really, really good. I'm trying to find it, guys. It could have been Capital One, maybe Landmark. Landmark, no. It might be Capital One. Credit One? Huh. No. I think it was Capital One. Let's try to find it. 
Oh no, it was Wells Fargo, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, this is it. This is it, guys. Wells Fargo. This is the big one. Finally. This is the main one I want to focus on. I'm not going to focus on all of them, but... Okay, right from the get-go... It says the account was closed, but when? The close date is July to tw July 1st. But then again, you see November, right here, it says it was closed. So this is bullshit. Okay. Then it says your amount past due was 294, but your balance was this. So that's a lie right there. 120 days, 3, 6, 9, 12. And then, this is another, it says 120 days late, but then, from when? From January? Okay. 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 20. That's 120. But, it says it's closed on July, right here. So, that, right there, is a lie. It's proved it. And this is only one credit report from, I think, my score IQ. There's other ways, no, this is like Credit Karma or something. Yeah, Credit Karma. So in order to be successful at credit repair, you're gonna have to compare different reports from different times. Get your Credit Karma one, get your Experian one, get, get your hard copy in the mail, get all of those together and you're gonna find that the stuff that you see here in this section is not like the previous credit report from that other client because it doesn't tell you the dispute status. Because I guarantee it will say, dispute status, not in dispute. And then it will say this shit. It says, it was in dispute. So that's a lie too. So, this right here is enough to get that off. Um, now let's look at this one. This is a good one. This report is crazy. You can just look. Look at this guy. This is all negative stuff. Student loans, student loans, student loans, student loans, student loans. But let's just go to the top first. Okay. So this guy, you know, he's, he's in the Air Force. Works for the city. You know, Air Force. Really cool. These addresses are okay. Essentially, we just want to get these off. That's it. No big deal. Let's go down and just look. So this guy, he has 14 closed accounts on here, 16 accounts there. Total of, like, 55 negative items, I think. 16, 17, 15, 15, 30 is about, 40, about 45, 50 negative items. 45 to 50, actually more because you look close to count. It's not going to show you all the derogatory or bad stuff. Um, 70 grand in debt, inquiries 14, 10, and 2. So, yeah. Let's go down. Department of Education. Ooh, a student loan. Okay, so here's a violation right there. And by the way, for these accounts, yeah, you could find violations like this, and then they're, they, they could be helpful. But we have a way to get this off that, that doesn't have anything to do with these violations that you see here. So if you can't find a lot of violations like, you know, this, like the one, like the one account before, then that's okay. Payment deferred, deferred. These dates are wrong right here. That date, that date is wrong with that one. So you might not find a lot of violations for student loans, but um, student loans, uh, 
I'll tell you right now, we don't go in the accounts individually and look for discrepancies. That's not how we get them off. Unless, and I have got them off. I always get them off. I'll leave a link in the description below of many student loans we've gotten off. And I'll tell you right now, we don't get these off by looking into this stuff and that and that. We get them off a different way. Okay, let's go down. One needs a Fair Credit Billing Act, or you know, Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. You want to do a debt validation process. You want to verify this step that says chapter 7, 11, or 17, I mean, or 12. And then this one says unrated bankruptcy, but you have to be specific as what bankruptcy it is so you could understand how that information was recorded and what debts were included and so on and so forth. So this is a very good winning piece right here. These dates are wrong as well so you could have a case there um, again this is a, this is a not specific it says FHA mortgage it needs to be specific what what bankruptcy is it it's missing there it's chapter 7 it's a 7 11 or 12 it needs to be specific these dates are different so you can knock that out of the park just like that okay And, uh, yeah, so just make sure that when you see a close date and then you look at the legend right here, you want to make sure that you could, uh, that's like a big one right there. Like if the, it says the account is closed on this date, but if you look, if you basically look, um, like in this section, you'll be able to compare and verify the uh, closing date. Where is it? Yeah, it's not on here. Anyway, with what it says right here, and then you could have a case right there. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't wanna, this report is too long. I'm working on it right now. I mean, look, these are all negatives. Okay, I can scroll and scroll and scroll. This is like how crazy these files can get. This, look at this, it's just pages and pages. How many pages is this? 15 pa 20, 30 pages already of negative stuff. So this file is, you know, pretty hard. But we've made a reputation by pretty much taking on the most hardest files. So, yeah, if you guys have a hard file, throw it our way. We will do a good job. So anyway, I thought I... Some of the files that we've worked on, some of the most... Um, you know, craziest of violations that I'm not really seeing anyone else, uh, you know, dispute. And like I said, you could know all the stuff that we talked about here in this video, but if you don't know the dispute frequency and the right departments to send these disputes, you're not going to be successful. So um, the last credit report I showed you, you saw 29 pages of negative stuff. Those are the types of files that we work on here at Pinnacle. So if you have a negative file that seems impossible to fix, go ahead and try us. You know, uh, try us out. See, uh, give us a shot. We won't let you down.